Welcome back in today's session. I'm Professor Prajas Khavadi. We are talking about spur gear. Today we are going to discuss what is interference, what is the effect of interference in different applications, and what are the method, methods to avoid the interference. As in most of the video, like regarding uh, length of path of contact, arc of contact, sliding ratio, velocity ratio, uh, we have studied that figure. And also in interference, we are understanding this figure, we are discussing this figure in case of interference also. So in brief, I explain that figure. See, this is pinion having center O1. This pinion is having three circles. One is base circle, this one. Second one is pitch circle diameter. And third one is addendum circle diameter. Then the gear which is meshing, meshing with pinion is having center O2. And again, it has three circles, base circle, pitch circle diameter, and this is addendum circle diameter. EF is the path of contact on the common tangent line to the base circle of pinion and gear. The angle formed by common tangent TT and common tangent to base circle AB forms the pressure angle phi here. Now, the fourth circle is introduced here for pinion. This is this one. And this circle is shown here, maximum addendum circle of pinion. The same four circle is added here also, this one, and give the name here, maximum addendum circle of gear. This fourth circle is introduced for gear, and this fourth circle is introduced for pinion. So what is that maximum addendum for gear and maximum addendum for pinion? So, see, O2F is the addendum circle radius, RA, addendum circle radius. And that point F is the point of contact for pinion tooth and gear tooth. At single point, both the tooth profile meet each other in the actual working and that point of contact F is continuously sliding on common tangent line. When it will be on common tangent line at only at that time it will follow the law of gearing and it will transmit the power. It is compulsory that that F point should must be on line AB. That is important condition to follow the law of carry. At the same time, point E should move on line AB only. At that time, it will follow the law of carry. That means point F and E should move on the line AB. Okay. Now, O2F, O2F is the addendum circle radius of gear. After that, if that point is moved on that line and it is taking the new position up to B, up to B, that means O to B is the maximum addendum circle radius, maximum addendum circle radius of gear, shown here, maximum addendum circle radius of gear. See here, 
if the radius of the addendum circle of gear is increased to O2B, if maximum addendum circle radius is increased up to O2B, O2B, that will be maximum addendum circle radius, that point F will move to point D. The point F, point of contact F, will move from F to B. When the radius is further increased, that is the important point in case of interference. When that radius, uh, a maximum addendum circle radius O2B is further increased, is further increased, this B point will move inside the base circle of PO. Correct? up to that is, that is the tangent point to the base circle but if that radius o2b is further increased is further increased it will move inside the base circle this is base circle of pa okay it will move inside the base circle and the point of contact when move inside the base circle of pa it not on the involute profile of tooth. That is the involute profile of tooth. Okay. So when that is up to B, it will on the involute profile. But when that radius will increase O to B, more than O to B, it won't be on the involute profile. On the involute profile. Vice versa, if O1A this is the O1E. O1E is addendum circle radius of pinion. O1E, this one. But that O1E, if we further increase up to point A, it will become O1A, and that is the maximum addendum for pinion, maximum addendum circle for pinion. If we further increase, it will move inside the base circle of gear it will move inside the base circle of the gear and it will be up to point a it will be on the involute profile but it is further increased it won't be on the in involute profile of gear okay that is very important to understand when that things happen the point f and point point f and point e will take the new position as point b and a respectively if up to here that is okay but when it is moved inside the base circle inside the base circle here b will be inside the base circle and a will be inside the base circle of here if those things will happen the tip the tip tip of tooth on the gear will then undercut the tooth of pinion at the root that is important at the root and removes the part of involute profile of tooth on the pinion like this at the root when that point insert in the base circle it will move inside the base circle of pinion or gear it will start Undercutting the tooth profile, undercutting the tooth profile below the piece circle diameter or base circle. And this involute profile will become non involute. This involute profile, this is involute profile, this is involute profile. Okay. So this involute profile, this involute profile, this involute profile, this involute profile due to that profile of tooth is digging the base circle here and this involute profile will become non-involute. This undertake undercutting will take place here and this involute profile become non-involute. So conversion of this involute profile into non-involute profile is called interference. Again I repeat the tip, the tip of tooth on the gear will then undercut the tooth of pinion at the root. At the root, 
and removes the part of involved profile or truth on the pinion. The same thing happens in gear also. So this effect is called as interference. So interference will occur only, only when Ra will increase R max. Ra is greater than R max or Ra will be greater than R max. This is R max. R A max for gear is a maximum random radius for gear. If that value increase the maximum radius of random for gear, interference will occur. When it crosses the R A max, it will move inside the base circle. When that R A max, this is R A, this is R A max, O1 A, small R A. This is small R A max. When it crosses R A max, it will move inside the base circle. And it, when it will move inside the base circle, this profile will start undercutting this profile. This profile, this face will start undercutting the uh, root of or flank of this tooth profile and this profile will become non-involved like this. So this phenomena is called interference. Okay. So these are the limiting condition. E point will move up to A and F point will move up to B. So up to here AB is the maximum path of contact. AB is maximum path of contact when E point will exceed the limit A. So this is the limiting values of path of contact AB. Okay. So up to A and up to B interference will not occur when it crosses the limit A and B. F will cross B and E will cross A. At that time interference will occur. Okay, so that point A and B is called point of interference. Point A and point B is called interference. The point A and B are called interference point. That means above that limit, the interference will occur, and within that limit, A B interference does not occur. Obviously, interference may be avoided. If the path of contact does not extend beyond interference point, that point is very important to understand and to solve the numericals also. Okay. So, in brief, we can say that the phenomenon when the tip of tooth, the tip, this is the tip, this is tip, this is tip, okay, this tip undercut the root of its matting gears. This tip undercut, this is cutting, undercutting is start here. Okay. Undercuts on the root only, that is the root. This is, this is a root. Okay. This root is start cutting. This phenomena is called as interference. That means conversion of involved profile into non-involved. This is involved, this is non-involved. Okay. This is involved and this is non-involved. So this is called as interference. Clear? Now, what are the effects of interference in actual applications? Due to undercutting, the teeth will become weak. This area, this width is more. This width of tooth, that is the width of tooth. But due to undercutting, that width will become less. The width will decrease. 
so due to decrease of width the material is removed from this area so it weakens the portion of the tooth profile at the root diameter when this weakens the area of the tooth profile which results in early failure of tooth that means the life of tooth will reduced here that is the drawback of interference occurring in the applications the second if a second drawback of the interference is when tooth become non involved the surface in the contact it will not touch each other properly this causes improper transmission of motion of, of power improper transmission of motion of power that means intermittent motion will take place while transmitting the power third is the relative motion between tooth surface will not be of a sliding type for transmitting the smooth power the motion of tooth profile will be sliding type the contact will be of sliding type so if that contact will won't be sliding type it incomplete motion will be transmitted complete motion won't be transmit incomplete motion will be transmitted next one non involute tooth profile gear have different velocities which can lock the two gears with each other so these are some drawbacks or effect of interference in application of spur gear for that purpose it is necessary to avoid the interference the designer is design the gear in such a way that the interference will not take place during operation so these are the some methods describing here it can be eliminated by selecting minimum number of teeth on pinion and gear it is very important factor while designing the gear to profile minimum number of teeth should be on pinion and gear there is a deviation for minimum number of teeth that we discuss in next lecture so if it, if it is not possible then following methods are adopted first method is by modifying profile of tooth this is the profile involute profile this is involute profile of tooth how it is modified the flank of pinion tooth and portion of face of gear are made cycloid instead of involute what is flank and what is face already discussed in terminology of spur gear so the flank of pinion tooth this is flank the surface below the pitch circle diameter that surface is flank and the surface above the pitch circle diameter that is face so this is flank face this is flank this is face above the pitch circle diameter this is flank face and flank so flank of pinion and portion of face of gear these are made cycloid instead of making it as involute so when the portion of flank of pinion below the base below the base circle is made cycloid at the same time the mating portion of gear is also made cycloid when this portion of pinion is made cycloid at the same time matting surface surface of gear should always made as a cycloid profile that is the first method to avoid the interference secondly by modifying addendum of pinion modifying addendum of pinion and gear see if addendum is increase or decrease at the same time addendum circle diameter will 
increase or decrease respectively. If you modify the addendum of pinion and gear, it will directly affect the pitch circle diameter of the pinion and gear. So if you modify the addendum of gear or pinion, at the same time you have to keep same the pitch circle diameter, base circle diameter, racial angle and center distance as it is it should it should should not change only you have to change the addendum without affecting these all parameters the designer have to understand that things while designing the profile of gear tooth so to maintain the same depth same depth of tooth the uh, the addendum is reduced by same amount as addendum is increased if addendum is increased of gear at that time the addendum should have reduce of pinion by same amount that is very important third one by modifying center distance between the pinion and gear without affecting the of gear by modifying center distance between pinion and gear without affecting law of gear so these are some methods to avoid the interference that you have to write down in examination so at the end of this video the student can understood what is interference what is the effect of interference in power transmission and what are the methods to avoid the interference if you have any doubt or query you can ask in chat session or in the comment section okay thank you so much